Welcome to the Life Star Training and Education Center. My name is Todd and I really appreciate you spending a few minutes with me today to talk about calcium channel blockers. The topic of calcium channel blockers came up recently because I took two questions from two paramedics about calcium channel blockers in the same week. And I thought, what a great opportunity to have a wider discussion with everyone about what they do and how they do it. The first question came from a paramedic who asked a very general question of, why do we use more than one calcium channel blocker to do different things in the body? If a calcium channel blocker is a calcium channel blocker, shouldn't they all do the same thing? The second question came from a paramedic who was carrying nicardipine for the very first time. Nicardipine is one of those drugs that tends to get dosed and titrated pretty much the same way everywhere you go. So when this paramedic showed up for this interfacility transport, the nurse and doctor explained exactly how they wanted the dosing and the titration to go, and everything went fantastic, did a great job on the transport, but after the fact, wanted to know, is this dosing and titration something that they just happen to prefer at this one hospital, or does everybody do it that way? The first calcium channel blocker we're going to talk about and exactly how it works is diltiazem. Diltiazem is generally something we use pre-hospital and interfacility for the atrial fibrillation or AFib patient whose heart rate has gotten out of control. When an AFibber gets out of control, that's called AFib with rapid ventricular response. And what's happening is all this electrical activity at the top of the heart in the atrium is traveling through the atrial ventricular node into the ventricles and it's causing them to fire too quickly as well. So the heart rate has gone way up and this patient might be complaining of chest pain, hypotension, maybe some dizziness or anxiety and we need to get that heart rate down. And so we put a calcium channel blocker on board and what it does, and at the risk of stirring up a little paramedic school post-traumatic stress, here is the action potential of that atrial ventricular node cell. And you'll see that the important phase, phase zero, is dominated by calcium. So if you want to slow this phase down, you're going to use a calcium channel blocker. And so looking at that red portion of the action potential, when you put the calcium channel blocker into play. It stretches out this into this, and that has the effect of slowing down the heart rate. And that's what diltiazem does as a calcium channel blocker. If diltiazem works like that on the heart as a calcium channel blocker, shouldn't nicardipine hydrochloride do the same thing because it is also a calcium channel blocker? And the answer to that question is no, they don't do the same thing because nicardipine on the left is classified as a dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker and diltiazem on the right is classified as a non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. And that just means that the molecule on the left has this portion right here, the dihydropyridine, and the molecule on the right does not have that. When you change the shape of the molecule, you change which receptors they tend to target and bind to, and that's another way of saying that they target different parts of the body. Both of these drugs target the vascular smooth muscle around our arteries. That causes the arteries to relax and open up. We call that vasodilation. Now in the case of nicardipine, that's a good thing because we're trying to control blood pressure. In the case of diltiazem, it's a good thing because it increases the blood flow around the heart and the heart is already working very, very hard and we want to get more oxygen to that muscle. But that's where the similarities between these drugs really ends. The dihydropyridine nicardipine on the left targets different parts of the body than the non-dihydropyridine diltiazem. And that means nicardipine has a higher affinity for the vascular smooth muscle than it does for the myocardium. It basically does next to nothing in the heart. While the diltiazem works on both the cardiac cells and on the vascular smooth muscle. That increases coronary perfusion, and that's a good thing for the AFib that's uncontrolled. Because both of these drugs tend to lower blood pressure, 
sometimes the body will react to the lower blood pressure by increasing the heart rate to compensate. That's called reflex tachycardia. But we don't want that to happen in the atrial fibrillation patient. So it's a good thing that diltiazem also has that second element of controlling the heart rate. It keeps the heart rate slowed down so it doesn't affect the amount of oxygen that the heart muscle needs. Nicardipine does cross the blood-brain barrier and so does diltiazem, but the nicardipine, when it enters the brain, helps to prevent vasospasm, or the contracting of the arteries in the brain, which keeps the brain well supplied with oxygen. Diltiazem also crosses that blood-brain barrier, but it doesn't bind to the L-type calcium channels that are in the neurons in the brain, and that means it does next to nothing in the brain. All of those differences can be traced back to the fact that the molecules are different shapes. The nicardipine has that dihydropyridine element to it, and the diltiazem doesn't, and that's why these drugs work so differently. So you should think of nicardipine as a calcium channel blocker that's targeting the brain to control blood pressure, particularly with a brain bleed. Doctors also prescribe nicardipine in order to control blood pressure when there's an aneurysm that's dissecting. We're trying to control blood pressure there. On the other side, diltiazem should be thought of as a cardiac calcium channel blocker. It vasodilates to feed the heart and it slows down the heart rate. And now you know the major differences between nicardipine and diltiazem, which are the two calcium channel blockers we encounter most frequently here at Lifestar EMS. If you want some information on how to dose those medications, down in the links below, you're going to see a link to our, my five-minute MedMath series that deals with cardism or diltiazem. As for nicardipine, that first paramedic that asked me the questions about nicardipine, the answer is it is a very standard system for dosing and titration, so let's go over exactly how that works. Your local protocols will tell you exactly how to administer nicardipine, but it's a very, very standard dosing and titration scheme. In most cases, the patient will be started at 5 milligrams per hour, and then you titrate up or down in increments of 2.5 milligrams per hour. In some cases, you're going to want to do a rapid titration, which would be about every five minutes. And in some cases, you can wait a little bit longer to see the effect and do it every 10 to 15 minutes. And the maximum dose is 15 milligrams per hour. Don't panic. The math is not that difficult. Plus, if you're running five milligrams an hour and titrating in two and a half milligram per hour increments with a maximum of 15, that means the most you're gonna have to do is titrate about four times until you max out on this drug. So it's not a lot of math, it's not a lot of calculation. Here is the formula you would use. Most places mix up nicardipine in a very standard way. Usually they take two of these vials, which means a total of 50 milligrams, and they put it in a 250 milliliter bag of D5W. So your concentration is going to be 50 milligrams into 50. And that concentration per milliliter, 50 divided by 250, will get you 0.2 milligrams per milliliter. So your concentration is almost always going to be 0.2 milligrams per milliliter when you pick up at a hospital that uses the standard concentration. You have to double check it, make sure the nurse ordered it right, make sure the pharmacy prepared it right. Probably you're going to have 0.2 milligrams per milliliter. The dose is right here, 5 milligrams per hour. And so we just fill in the, the numbers. Our dose, which came from the doctor's orders, is 5 milligrams per hour. I'm trying to make this legible. And the concentration is 0 0.2 milligrams per milliliter. The milligram terms cancel out, and all that is left is the hour, which is right there and the milliliters, which is right here. And five divided by 0 0.2 is 25 milliliters per hour. Now here's where everything gets even easier. Because this is such a widely used dose and titration scheme, the math is already halfway done for you. 
when it comes time to titrate, we know that five milligrams per hour is 25 milliliters per hour, and we're gonna titrate in increments of 2.5, which is half of five. 2.5 is half of five, so half of 25 is gonna be the unit that you titrate by, which is 12.5 milliliters per hour. So all we have to do is adjust our 25 milliliters per hour up or down in units of 12.5 milliliters per hour each time we want to titrate up or down. And since that is such a standard dose and titration scheme, you might carry a reference card in your pocket that has this chart already on it. So you don't have to do any of this math other than double checking that the concentration is the same. As long as the concentration is 50 milligrams in 250 milliliters of D5W, all the math is done for you already. But if you didn't bring a reference card with you, the math is really super, super simple, isn't it? And that is how you give nicardipine. There you have just a little bit of information about the two most commonly encountered calcium channel blockers at Lifestar EMS, diltiazem and nicardipine, and a little bit about how to give it. Please check the description for the links on more useful videos on calcium channel blockers, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video if it helped you out. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you on the next one.